on, everybody? Welcome back to the Submission Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Muto. Glad you join us again. We're here with another week of uh, fishing discussion. We got our guest, Nate. How do you say your last name? Winicky. Nate Winicky. Yes. Yeah, you were on You were on with us last year. Um, sure was. And, um, yeah, you were with uh, BD Outdoors and uh, PCBT. And, you know, that's a fishing tackle store up there in Oceanside in California. And so what you been up to, man? How you been? Well, yeah. Well, first off, thanks for having me on, Mike. Super Absolutely. stoked to be back. You know, you're kind of a minor legend here, at least in like the, the San Diego scene because you were doing Submission jigs are awesome. Uh, I work at PCBT. That stands for Pacific Coast Bait and Tackle. It's a very small but very well-stocked little tackle store at Oceanside. Um, and we support, you know, brand, all sorts of brands, but especially um, Submission. It was great. We uh, yeah. selling the, the crap out of your jigs, so that's been awesome. That's awesome. I know we got this some new stock coming in and it made a new cool. order so we'll, we'll get it out to you guys right on, right yeah that on. was like my um before i moved out here to florida that was like my home tackle store because i was up there in carlsbad and yeah you guys were the closest one you were like right around the corner you were i think the only place that i dropped my stuff off like personally because it was just <laughs> yeah everybody else i mail shipments to and i mailed to the tackle store but you guys i would just drive it down throw it in a box and drop it off for you so that was, that was awesome and it was it was cool like getting to meet the man in person you know like actually seeing and we were talking about how to do jigs and then what i thought was actually really cool was last year we went on the apollo trip and that was a great time uh just chatting with you about the the from start to finish like how you design the jigs talking with the guys overseas getting them printed and made and then shipped back over it was cool so yeah. i'm stoked to see where you're going and, and how the co- how the company is continuing to grow so probably. yeah it's been good yeah just getting, getting through the learning all the growing pains you know it's like oh, yeah, i've never done um you know, I've owned like some other businesses and stuff in the past, but they've all been like service industry stuff and I've never had to do like retail. So it's like they're <laughs> trying to learn like inventory good. and it's just oh like God, I can imagine then running out of stock. They're like, trying to fix shore up all these things that just been it's been a learning experience for sure. We're still pretty totally. new, but we're getting there. We're that's awesome. Dude. Trying to patch some of the holes in the ship so we can oh, for sure get it going. Now yeah, I so- am I'm curious about Florida, dude. I kind of want to talk a little bit about the fishing you've been doing out there because I am very keen on doing some stuff outside California. I'm sure we'll talk all about that, you know, yeah. in this. But what have you been doing? What's what's going on? Like, how do the jigs work out there? Um, it's a little – well, like offshore, they pretty much work the same. We went out uh, – actually went out yesterday and um, – yeah. It was pretty crazy because it was like a small craft advisory and it was, well, we still went offshore. <laughs> we were the only boat out there. So it's just like all right. the wind Same. and weather's been, it's been pretty, pretty bad, but you know, we still get out there and fish. Like I, I don't yeah, really care, yeah. but you know, they're similar as far as, so the inshore is totally different. The offshore is pretty much the same, you know, we're okay. at 40, 60, 80 gram, the heavier stuff, because it's, sure. we're fishing, um, like amberjack which is really similar to a yellowtail um oh yeah there's cobia snapper or like the rockfish equivalent to like california really? you know so there's okay, there's no over the bottom yeah there's no rockfish out here <laughs> right so there's got you basically there's no rocks we, we do is we fish reef and wrecks and uh, um the snapper so there's like a bunch of variety of snapper so this they're kind of like the rockfish they're on the bottom they're aggressive like that they're kind of this they bite better which is cool um, but the, but that's pretty much it's pretty much similar there's mahi mahi out here so there's like the dorado offshore they, they work the same now inshore is a different story so inshore in california you have the spotty game right in halibut and stuff like that the difference here is that it's very shallow um okay okay like we're talking redfish sea trout i mean sometimes they're like less than a foot of water you know if you're in the skinny water oh, no kidding. Really? and even even the even the docks that we fish like around here so you can fish docks but even then they're about maybe 10, 15 feet. So uh, I do more casting than I do vertical style out here with the small stuff. Um, really? And you just yeah. cast and winding and it's working just fine. Huh? Yeah. So I cast and then I'll, I'll pop them off the bottom. I'll kind of do like a sideways sure. retrieve and get it to kind yeah. of bounce and swim. Uh, yeah. They've been sea trout been crushing a mangrove snapper, oh, but cool. yeah, just changing and it up yeah. a little bit. You, you can still vertical the pylons, but it's, it's definitely been different, but the jigs, I mean, they still work. I mean, That's it's been cool. great. So I've seen these guys on the East Coast vertically jig with jigs, very similar submissions for East Coast sheep's head. And yeah. it seems like they're really difficult to get to bite. But once you get them going, it goes like wide. 
Have you had any of the sheephead, like the barred sheephead fishing? Have I you haven't. Seen those? I, I've seen them. They're out here. I'm up in the okay. uh, Jacksonville area, and Got it. they have like they have sheephead tournaments and stuff like that. Um, I know they're around the pylons and bridges. I actually haven't gone out and targeted them yet. So huh. I know they're kind of like, yeah, they're real similar to the California sheephead in that they eat. They don't look anything alike, but they eat similar stuff um, oh, like okay. shell shellfish and shrimp. Gotcha. You know, oysters and stuff like that. So it's funny that they. They're similar. They have similar diets, and I, I think they kind of act. Um, they have similar tendencies and temperament as well, I believe. You know, it's funny because I was on a trip. Sheephead out here, the California sheephead, love slow pitch jigs. It's weird. I've caught a number of good size sheephead on slow pitch. And I was on a trip last year with uh, Steve Carson from Pen Reels, and he was slow pitching, doing his thing. We were actually down in Baja on the ridge. And he looks up and he, and we've been catching yellows for like three days. So we're like, all right, another yellow. So he's, he's whining, he's whining. He's like, oh, this thing's dogging me. And he brings it up and he kind of looks at it. He's like, what do I have? And he just sees this red glow coming up. And I had to show you a picture after this. <laughs> it, he had a double. So top hook and bottom hook. Right. That's awesome. 13 pound sheep head on each hook. That's, he that's had man. a huge one. On each of 26 pounds of sheep on one drop, it was the most insane thing you've ever seen. That so is pretty anything crazy. Red, anything like crustacean colored, especially yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And they smoke them. Yeah, a lot of so, people like using the red color for that, like that real dark red crab sort of looking yeah. thing. Sheephead is interesting. That was one of those like species that I wasn't sure eats jigs, you know, because it's like <laughs> right. We know we know predatory them. fish eat them. White fish is another one that I didn't think would eat them, but the white fish eat the jigs too, surprisingly. I haven't caught a white fish yet. But and I see them, man. They're so aggressive. Yeah. And the sheephead too was like because I never really targeted them with it. And then people started sending me pictures and I was like, that was one I always had a question mark about yeah. because I know they kind of eat um a lot of shellfish and stuff. So I'm like, I don't know if they'll go after like a a jig, but Apparently they do, which is crazy. It's on the bottom and in front of their face, man. They're gonna yeah. smoke it. Yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome to hear. Yeah. So um what have you been up to in California? You been fishing or yeah, lots of fishing. Or has the weather been too bad? So uh you know what the weather's actually been pretty good. Um we it's typical springtime stuff, like weekly storms that roll through for like a day or two, but um Large mouth fishing has been excellent. I've been hitting the lakes and uh, doing really well. We had a great pre-spawn. We're now in like full spawn mode. I'm sure out in Florida, you guys are, I think they spawn year round in Florida. It's insane. Yeah, it's just so um, warm. Yeah, but out here, it's been great fishing. Um, In the bays and stuff, uh, halibut has been going off. I had an epic halibut winter, actually. It's been a little bit since I've had a really solid hit on the flatfish probably depends since like late december but another reason for that and what's super exciting is that i'm getting a new boat and that's good oh nice awesome so before this uh the first boat that i bought i I went into it 50 50 with my dad we got a lun 1775 date fee like bass boat like basically a great lakes boat right Um, right. it was amazing it was literally the best first craft i could have ever had we fished the bays like once or twice a week, we would sometimes go outside and fish the kelp, but that boat has a very shallow draft and being aluminum, it's really light. So it doesn't do great when you get into actual weather. Right. Um, right. So we were at this boat show, the PCS show and, uh, the Rabalo people were there and they had this clearance right. on a 20 foot Cayman Bay boat. And we did, we crunched the numbers and we could do it. So we're going <laughs> to upgrade. We're, uh, we're trading in the lug. We're getting a 20 foot Rabalo Bay boat. And the uh, the outside is now unlocked for me. So I've been bay fishing uh, all winter and spring. And now uh, coming into the real season, I'm super excited to get outside and, and do some tuna fishing on my own and and figure out the local kelp beds, hopefully some sea bass, yeah. home garden yellowtail, big halibut, all in the works. Super excited. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So no, you're going to get rid of the old boat? You're not going to keep them both? Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could. <laughs> just not, doesn't make sense. Do yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a space either, you know. But that um, makes sense. It's, it's like out it's here. Great. I had to buy. I had to get a. I bought a second boat because I got my offshore boat. But then I had to buy one for the 
well, inshore I mean, fishing here. It's like this. It's too. It's, it's totally two different. Worlds, like it's though. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. so different. Out, out here, the bay is still sixty feet deep. Yes, so, exactly. I mean, and when it gets windy, it's like choppy. So you want a yeah. a fiberglass boat. Yeah, um, you can totally get away with. Feet. Yeah, you can fish the bays in California with like a normal boat. Oh, yeah. out here you I need see. like a flat boat. It's crazy. I see people drifting in the back bay. You know what? I saw the sport boat, the Dolphin. It's an 80 foot by 20 foot giant sport boat. And they were drifting oh, yeah. in I'm, like I've seven been on feet it. of water. Yeah. They were drifting in the wow. back bay for Halloween. And they did really? extremely well. They had a day. That's wild, man. It was, it was loaded. They had 39 people, but they got 28 legal fish and really? 15 shorts. And this is for a half day run. So this is like six hours of fishing. It was like, why? They, uh, that's crazy and that's, and that's like you don't even have to go out you know that's no, just like a no it was such a trip i did one last year and i got i actually caught a halibut i got like a 25 incher but this past day or this it was two weeks ago they got um they got a 20 pounder and two 18 pounders uh, along with 25 more so man really, that's really nice. good fish super good fish. well, well we, we went fishing and you caught that big halibut. Um, yeah, I mean, we were also that was also an experience. We were like in a oh, sport boat. Crazy. We were also very shallow. We were like almost where the surf was breaking up at the islands. I that think that was San Nicolas Island. And yeah, I'd never seen anything like that. But you set the scene. I know I talked about it last year, you guys. But we were like we we're kind of near the island, but like just where the waves, like just before the waves were breaking, like on mm -hmm. the surf, and they we were extremely oh, shallow and. Being on a huge boat like that, like that close to the water, it was, it was crazy. I, I didn't think yeah. those big boats could do that, but I, I don't, I guess I don't see why not. If the draft is high enough, you know, you're, you know, good to I go. mean, if, if they know where they're at and they know the kind of holes and stuff, and we're always drifting out, you know, that's where we start. And then we go deeper and deeper and deeper, but it was crazy because like we were kind of down a point. So like the points up here, we're kind of down. There. Yeah. Um, so you look to your left and you can watch the waves come in. Like we were past the surf line at that point. And then we would kind of roll up and then it would go boom, like 20 feet, 30 feet ahead of us. It was crazy. Yeah. But that, that is nice. Cool that was a great trip. I got my PB out on that trip, a 23 pounder on light line, too, which was yeah, that's crazy. awesome. That was on 20 pound, which was sick. I'm going to miss the uh, helmet out here. Uh, Although we have, no. there's flounder in flounder. Florida, but they're, yeah, I caught a flounder actually on one of the jigs. Um, really? But they don't get near. They don't get as big. But they're good. I mean, they're equally as delicious. You know, they're flat fish. Oh, yeah, for sure. Super good. But they they don't get the same size as, you know, Pacific halibut for sure. Or you know, it's, California it's, halibut even. I've been getting pretty oh, yeah. big. Uh, it's interesting. You know, working at the bait shop, I get all sorts of people coming in, and especially because we're right next to Camp Pendleton. There's people from all across the country that fish our little zone, and there's a couple of guys that are from. I think either South Carolina or Florida, and they are expert halibut fishermen. As oh, soon as they came out here, but because they fished because they were fishing back flounder. Home. Oh, oh yeah, man, yeah. they fished they fished flounder like full speed back home, and they would just do things slightly different than what we would do out here. Like they would yeah. use like a hairy jig with like a a slug on the back of it, and they would just really slowly hop it right on bottom. Or they would use different kinds of baits, like they would catch a little surf perch, or they would catch a little croaker, or they would do something kind of strange, you know, like outside the norm. And they got some freaking monsters from the from the, the shore, just from the basins and, and the lagoon. Yeah, they got that's like crazy. Twenty pound plus fish, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, there's there's guys that just target them out here. Oh yeah, there's there's a whole community I'm sure out there too. And that's funny that they caught it like. Up in the northern part of the East Coast, they call them fluke, and then down here they're flounder, but they're the, yep. sa they're the same fish. Okay. It gets so confusing, you know, when you start, everybody's got different names for everything, but yeah. That's cool seeing that translation, though. You know, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's all but it, it makes sense. Stuff. They're yeah, the same. I mean, they, they're the same type of predator. They lay yeah. down, they camouflage, they ambush. It's they're really the same, same bite. Exactly. But they like them better out here just because they get three times the size you know yeah you can, you can hook up and exactly. all of a sudden you don't want to ride with one of these things it's yeah crazy. yeah 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 but that's, that's um, yeah also what's going on super exciting with bd uh is a spotty tournament that we have uh releasing in a couple of months that's gonna be that's i've been putting a lot of time into that uh we're yeah. working jointly so with this what's up 
I was going to say, let's talk about uh, let's BD real quick. So yeah. people that aren't are familiar with it or yeah, absolutely. I'm sure everybody is, pretty much is, but it's, what is BD? What do you guys do? And mm-hmm. kind of give us the rundown on BD Outdoors sure. a little bit. So BD Outdoors is a media company. We're based here in Southern California, but we're branching out uh, nationally now. Um, and basically we are a source for fishermen to go online. They get uh, up-to-date reports on what's going on. We have lots of how-to and informational videos and we have just general fishing related content. So if you're into that stuff, recipes, um, rigging tips, uh, fishing tips, all that kind of stuff is, is available through media outdoors. We're basically just a saltwater community, um, that, that get together and share our passions. And, and personally, you know, I've been working with them for, uh, not that long, about four months now. Um, and I've been doing all of their social media management. Well, you were with them last year, right? When I, I when was, we were on the trip, so I am or a not lot like more officially. Yeah, okay. so I, I was a pro contributor last year. So oh, we have oh, a okay, pro okay. Team of authors that makes sense, and people like willing to do videos and stuff, and they're not working, like, they're not on contract or anything. But right, like, right, right. We pay them per video or whatever that they do. Um, I was doing that for like a year and a half, and then I, I see. opened up to actually work in office, and I was like, yes, I would love to. That sounds awesome. So okay, that makes sense. So you're officially with them now. Oh, I'm cool. officially with them now, and it's been great. Yeah, it's been super fun. Yeah, and BD for those of you guys that don't know, like it was Bloody Dex was the original name. And Bloody anybody Dex. that knows anything, I mean, Bloody Dex was like really some like pioneers, not just on the fishing world, but like in the internet. Like sure. I remember going to BD. Like you guys have got to be what 15, 20 years old or something like we that. Are, like I think twenty one or twenty two. Yeah, years old. It's, like I been remember for a while. That's right. It's, like, it's pretty crazy. Being yeah, like early two thousands, early two thousands as a forum yeah. based site that kind of had yep. no filters. Um, and then just oh, it was the it was the wild fishing. west, man. It was wild. Yeah, yeah. it was nuts. Fire it was just source. like, but it was the only place to go. And it was like the first yep. message. Yeah, it was when message boards were like the thing and all the rage, and everybody had bloody deck stickers. Like if you go to Southern yep. California, you would see like. Yep. Even 20 years ago, the bloody deck stickers on the back of pickup trucks. And it was just like, it was crazy. And BD's been around for like so long. It's really a pioneer in the fishing world, you know. It's a whole culture. and It's pioneering fishing media, you know, because that's something yeah. that I didn't even realize was such an industry. But it is. It's that, you know, you're not working on a boat or you're not working in a tackle store, but you're working on marketing different different products to our audience, to fishermen. And that's yeah. that's such a huge part of this industry is being able to sell things and be able to, to advertise and and show a product in a certain light that gets people interested in. So yeah. learning all of that, learning uh, business relations and networking has been extremely helpful for me. I mean, I've, le- I've been learning a ton uh, just working yeah. with BD. It's been a really cool transition from fishing to working at the tackle shop to now kind of working uh, in the corporate fishing world. So yeah, it's cool. And it's blessed to do it. Yeah. And I've worked with BD um, mm-hmm. as like um, a sponsor, so to speak. And it, it's always yeah. been good. I've sponsored um, quite a few charters now for you guys and mm-hmm. get to go on them and fish with you all. And yeah, have product sponsored. And then I've been on that. You guys, you guys have a podcast. I've been on the podcast out there and yeah, yep. it's, it's cool. It, it's really cool. It's fun. And you, you said you guys are it. growing, going nationwide or, They've always yeah, kind of had a so, presence in Florida, right? I know, like, I've seen the videos with Ollie is with, um, what's the name, Rush or something like that. Yes. They've been doing, like, the, so they've been doing the Florida thing for a while, but yeah, so he's really so trying to Ali lean into is, it. Ali is a very impressive, impressive businessman. He does a lot besides just BD. He was the founder of BD, um, but he does a whole bunch of other things. He has several different companies, one of which is a TV show called Local Knowledge, uh, yep. and they are based... Um, both on the east and west coast, but the kind of the premise of the show is that Ali is like kind of he's got this west coast scene down, and he's paired up with his good buddy Rush Maltz, who is an expert at east coast tactics. So they kind of switch off, going from Florida to California, back to Florida, and then they'll go somewhere else like Nicaragua or whatever fishing destination, and they'll catch all sorts of things. And they also have how-to videos and tips and everything. Um, so. We're kind of trying to expand upon that and make BD both an East and West Coast brand. 
So we're doing a push. We have an ambassador program or pro staff program now that we're trying to get more people involved in social media is just tagging us, you know, mentioning us in our yeah. in their stories, wearing our apparel. Um, and we're reaching out to Florida guys and trying to kind of get that going. Um, it's still in the works. You know, we still have a lot of progress to be done here on the West Coast. Um, but the Florida scene is is really the center of fishing within America. It's amazing. I mean, working with different companies. I used to work with Penn, and their main focus is Florida. Like, yeah. unequivocally, they focus on Florida. Like, it's its own marketplace. There's the East Coast, there's the West Coast, there's the Central, and there's Florida. It's like its own thing. It's crazy. Yeah. So Florida is just like it's, it's, it's kind people of, say it's the fishing capital of the world, but it, at least the United States, but I mean, oh, yeah. it really is. I mean, it's everybody out here's fishes. I know we've done like the numbers and just like the number of fishing licenses sold in Florida compared to like, you think California is pretty big, but the California fishery is actually pretty tight knit, pretty, it's relatively small. It's like everybody that fishes knows everybody out there. You know, it's like Absolutely. the government kind of hates you and you got to stick together. And it's like, I, I think you're a lot closer in California as far as the angler community is I, like in Florida. Every, fishing is just like, just assume somebody's a fisherman here because they, they probably are. Like it's not some, it's, or in California, it seems like it's more of a, you're in like a, a kind of a unique of group. Thing. Yeah. Like yeah. I remember. In, in like when you're school, in, you're in and you know somebody oh, like, oh, yeah. you fish, you fish, oh, and you yeah. got your best yeah. friends. Out here, it's like, of course you fish. Like that's the, <laughs> Like out yeah, here, it's, yeah. it's not a surprise. If you tell somebody you fish, you're like, well, yeah, duh. Yeah, like honestly, you don't fish, like, of course you do. Yeah, <laughs> right. Fishing, what are you doing? Yeah, um, it totally is. It's, it's a different, totally different mindset. Damn. Yeah, like growing up here, I, I'd be in high school, and we had a. I actually was a part of the the OHS fishing club. I remember you telling me that. That's crazy. We had four members, dude. <laughs> there yeah. was only four of us. And it's like, I would, we were hyped. You know, we would all go on like a half day trip together and catch bass and mackerel and stuff. And then one time we caught a yellowtail and we were hyped, you know, we were all right. stoked. But like, same thing. Yeah. Everyone was surfing or skating, you know, and fishing was sort of a thing, but even still it's, it's definitely not as popular as I would expect it to be, because I think it's great fun. I yeah, I mean, I do too. Awesome. I think it's, I think it's just. Um, I feel like the barrier, like trying to get to fishing, is a little harder in California. I think too. Like, oh, yeah. even though it's I got such so. a long coastline, you still like if you're a saltwater fisherman, right? You've only got the coast, and then so let's just take Southern California. You've got a couple bays, right? But you can name them on one hand. It's like Mission Bay, San Diego Bay, Dana Landing, and then there's like Long Beach. Like there's not much. And then you've got the coast. But like in Florida, it's all – you've got the big coastline, but there's intercoastal as well. There's hmm. these saltwater rivers that just spaghetti through inside the state. Like you can pretty much be – like where I'm at in Jacksonville, any part of the city you're at here – you can get to the water in like the snap of a finger. Like there's not, there's not like one bay that you have to go to, you know, when San Diego, we always like San Diego Bay or mission Bay was like where you went here. It's like, you can go pretty much anywhere. Like the, the waterway just fingers and spreads throughout the whole city. And it's just so easy to get, to get somewhere and go fishing. You could fish from bridges or yep. little tributaries. It's, it's just crazy. I think it's just an accessibility thing. In fact, California, it's definitely, it's a trip. A lot of saltwater guys. It's like they live in the inland California, and they gotta they they travel, dude. And it's sometimes it's an event. Like they only fish a couple times a year because it's you got to go an hour and a half, so you got to pack your stuff, get out there, mm -hmm. and it's 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 a little different. Yeah, different. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's like getting up at three a.m. and driving two hours to the landing, and then doing this whole thing. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's the big difference is that we just don't have the water out here. It's a desert, you know. I mean, like. Talk about bass fishing, like largemouth fishing. It's nothing compared to what you guys have in Florida. It is nothing. We have big fish, yes, but they're in they're in like fish pools. I mean, it, it's our pond. They're like ponds, man. I mean, Lake Poway, you could walk around the whole thing in thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, so easily. That's like one right. of our main lakes, you know. Right, right. Um, so that it just and that's what's wild. Out. I. I've never even done like freshwater fishing hardly, you know, oh, even though I grew man. up on a lake 
it was mostly trout, but I've never, I've just, I don't think I've ever been bass fishing my entire life. Freshwater what? bass fishing. Yeah. Oh, I you tell people that they, for, I've been salt. like a what? saltwater guy, like my whole oh, life. So I mean, yeah. I like to have a balance. It's, it's a completely different vibe going to the lake or just seeing everything so much quieter. You just got to focus into it. Yeah. Uh, and, and especially out here, everything is either finesse fishing or giant swim bait power fishing. But even with that, you're using two completely different rigs. Like you can either use like six pound and a little drop shot or like a nine and a half inch trout. Right. At the same time, you got to have to have the same mentality. You got to be like super quiet, super stealthy, approach the spot really like, you know, down low. Right. Do your right. Casts. Like the conditions have to be perfect. Like almost every lake around here has like max visibility of water, like 20 plus fizz. Um, and it makes it so hard to get these fish to bite because they will yeah. see you from like a hundred yards away. And like you go That's to Lake wild, Poway, and you go to Lake Poway, you will see multiple double digit bass every single time. And you That's will crazy. not catch them. They will look at you. They've seen like, it all. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I've, I've seen this every single time. And the lake's open. But like I've already been day. caught six times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I I'm not going, going for a seventh. Where... No. Nah. So it just makes the, the fishing really tough out here, but it's so rewarding when you get a big fish um, yeah. because you have to put your time in and you just got to grind and, and rarely does it come by chance. It, it's right. mostly like putting in the effort and just getting it done. It's probably why I stick to salt water. It's like, I like catching, yeah, I like true. catching more than I like fishing. The <laughs> amount of bites is just so much. You just, yeah, like spotty fishing, you know, out here. I mean, it's like this, you use the same techniques as you would largemouth. But you, a, a good day is 75 fish, 100 fish, you know? Right. Granted, only a couple of them are going to be bigger than a pound and a half. But um, Sure, but I if you if you want to catch fish, long. there's zones you can go to, like, oh, just man, catch them. Yeah. Just absolutely rub them. Yeah. So it, That's why I always feel bad when people ask about, like, tell me how good, like, the freshwater fishing is. I'm like, I've never done it. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody asked me about, ask. like, yep. <laughs> everybody asked me about, like, peacock bass out here and stuff, too. And I'm like... <laughs> Like, I don't know. I haven't checked. I keep and I keep saying I'm gonna go like do more freshwater fishing, and I never do. But maybe this year, I just gotta have somebody Dude. take me out and go do it. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's the biggest thing is just having someone guide you around. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, let's talk about um spotty fishing. So I know Southern California yes. is like that's the uh, probably I think the biggest probably growing community in Southern California fishermen is go is probably the spotty fishing. I mean that's just been blowing up and yeah um, you guys talk gotta about, talk about accessibility that's probably the most accessible yeah. fishery we have just because you know there's not a lot of places around here you can just walk up to and fish a lot of stuff is either private or you're not allowed to yep but yep. in the bays and the, in the local lagoons and stuff um spotties are by far the most dominant predatory species out there there's halibut which are much bigger but they're just a lot fewer in number um, spotties will carp at the bottom and they eat everything. So they're super fun for kids to grow up fishing on. You know, you go on, walk under the bridges and cast little swim baits or flukes or whatever. You catch spotties all day. Um, so it's, it is a very, it's very much a growing community because beforehand everyone was just heading offshore and they never, you know, right. fish the bays or whatever. But now that going offshore is becoming so much more expensive people are looking for other options or in the winter time when the fishing is not good, people are looking yeah. at what to do. And I was going to say that winter, winter time is like a winter time's a big thing too. Cause it's oh, like yeah. California used to be like, you're saying if you went offshore, well, that's great, but you're only fishing then a couple months out of the year. You know, yeah, exactly. Maybe you half, half like the year maybe, in California, if that's your goal, but you can, yeah. yeah, but you can fish the bays and catch spotted bay bass and stuff like that year round. I mean, they year don't round. leave, they're not pelagic. They don't. Yeah. 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 So it's, you know, it's very accessible for everybody. It's easy to do. It's really fun. So it, it makes sense why more people are choosing to do it. Personally, I love spotty fishing. I think it's a great, yeah. just relaxing thing. You don't got to so think awesome. too hard about it, you know? Like, you just go out there. If they're biting, you're going to get a, a bite in the first or second cast. And yeah. that's what I like about it. You, you just go out there and just have fun. Yeah. So, and if you don't, you're going to be like, it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> oh, Jesus, tell me about it. There's some days when I'm like really struggling to get a spotty bite. And I'm just like, all right, I'm going to go home. Because I have caught so many of these fish. I know that probably tomorrow they're going to bite stupid. So yeah, I'm just going to yeah. go home and come back when they're like biting crazy. That's, uh, so, that's so true. And it's like those yeah. days 
I've said it before. It's like sometimes those slow days, though, just like that one fish is so much more rewarding than like those 50 fish days because it's like 100%. you work so hard and finally you get a biter. And you're just like, <laughs> you're like yeah, it's so much more exhilarating. Yeah, it's like yeah. you've gone hours with nothing and then it finally lights up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's more fishing out of here, dude. Like that's literally what it is. Yeah, that's I spent, brutal. I I hiked the lake for five hours and got one fish, but at least it wasn't no fish. fish. You know, that's I got right. One. So the, yeah. the date was worth it. But uh, yeah. going back to spotty fishing, um, you know, it is very much a growing community. It is exciting to see everybody kind of into it, and it's cool to see that it's um, it's both the older generation you know the older guys just kind of looking for something to do and also the groms you know that the young yeah, guys getting yeah. into fishing so in order to kind of highlight that with bd we're doing this spotty tournament which is going to kind of combine both we're we have a bunch of prizes now we have some great main prizes um that will definitely get those those older and the better kind of like decent spotty fishermen to join this but also we have a bunch of like kid prizes and different like categories for guys 15 and under so we're trying to involve uh, this you know the all the kids in the area get them knowing about bd get them knowing about the cca which is a nationwide thing i'm sure um and uh and it's all for a good cause it's only 20 bucks too so it's actually it's a it's an affordable at um tournament to enter that's awesome so this is the Mm -hmm. first annual this is the first time we've ever done anything like this yeah bd is largely a offshore centered brand um and we're now making a push into like the inshore scene and i think it's about time because like you're saying yeah you just you you can't ignore it anymore it's no the offshore is huge but it's the inshore is it's always active it's the guys are always fishing you just can't Mm -hmm. you can't can't overlook them anymore that's that's cool dude so when it what are the dates do you guys have the dates nailed down or Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be in Mission Bay, Dana Landing on May 11th. Uh, lines in at 7 a.m., uh, fishing till 1 p.m. You can check in with us at 6.15 to 7. Um, you can sign up online at bdoutdoors.com uh, or through the CCA website. But BD, it's going to just root me back to BD. Um, so, yeah, bdoutdoors.com. Pretty sure, Mike, you're going to be uh, – he's going to send us some jigs. Yeah, so, we're going to yeah. sponsor that for sure. You know, yeah. we've been – our jigs are really like, I mean, the spotty fishing is what put us on the map. You know, honestly, it's it's become a I'm whole thing. So, yeah, we don't we don't have, we're always there for the for the spotty guys for sure. I got a story of the, 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 the spotty so fishing. Cool. So I was spotty fishing one of the last times, actually the last time on my old boat, and I was flipping pilings with a ten gram assassin jig, and it was slow, but all of a sudden I start lighting up. Wait, wait, not an assassin. It was a sumo jig. There you go. But well, we had the insane. mercenary. We, we changed the assassin to the mercenary. Ooh, that sounds better. But, <laughs> um, uh, so I was flipping. That's my favorite jig. It's the 10 gram silver. Uh, the sumo. Sumo. And it's yeah. killer. So I was flipping pilings. I get like three back to back to back. And then I cast another piling. It's like halfway down. And it kind of goes, bing, bing. and I'm like, what the? I sit the hook and I'm widening. And I look at the water and I see this long chrome fish. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I look at it and it's a big corbina. Like the ones you catch on the surf. Yeah. It's in yeah. the harbor, dude. And it that's crazy. Jig, like full speed. And it starts dogging me all around the boat. I do like three circles around the boat. We finally net it. And it was it was like an 18 and a half inch corbina, which is a good one from California standards. So super stoked. Submission hell got yeah, done man. for me. It was epic. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, there's been like yeah, um, the surf um, surf community has really been picking up on them too. People have been yeah. using those 10, 10 and 15 grams for, mm-hmm. you know, the um, perch and it just pretty much like anything bullets. out there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, crazy. Like you said, you just kind of work it back in that side action, just kind of get it off the bottom and yeah. they smoke them. Yeah, it's it's been good, man. Mm-hmm. So are you guys back to the tournament? Are you guys doing... um? So it's not a weigh-in, right? You guys are just doing yeah. length pictures, sending, gonna put in pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's through the Fishing Chaos app. It's a. It, oh, so there's it, an it, app. Okay. Yeah. So it, this is like a, a different, like a third-party app. They run fishing tournaments. That's literally what they have been designed okay. to do. So what you do is you download the Fishing Chaos app. Once you do that, you just look up Bay Bass Classic, and it's gonna come up right away. We have a page with them. 
you just click the page. It gives you all the info again, just so you know when to sign in, where it's going to be, what's going to kind of basically what's going on. And you use that app to take pictures uh, of your fish and submit it. And that automatically goes into a big database and you'll be ranked based on your results, you know, and you can see like, um, in live time, uh, what's going on and where you're at in the leaderboards and everything. Oh, wow. So wow. it's, I it's didn't even know that was a platform. thing. Oh, it's That's honestly, cool. it makes it so much easier and so much more fun because we don't have to design anything and it makes cheating a lot harder because it's right there, you know? And, um, and yeah, yeah. So fishing chaos app. That's so okay. Be That's awesome. Do it. Catch record what release. Is, That's the best thing to do. I don't want to be killed. What is the, lives. um, you guys got to have like, um, bump boards or what's the uh, measuring yes so when you sign up to 20 dollars sign up fate uh when you do that you're going to be getting an angler bag which is basically 20 dollars worth of fishing gear and different swag that we're going to be getting back to you so basically you're getting your entry back in the form of fishing gear and you also get a 25 inch bump board that has the bdcca logo on it oh wow and Dude, that's um, awesome mm-hmm and so you're going to have an official bump board. You're going to put your fish on the bump board. Every fish to to register has to be on that tournament. Board. Okay. Just so okay. You know, people can't use fish that they caught two weeks ago. Right, right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool, dude. I didn't know that was, that was part of the thing. That's mm-hmm. that's like 21st century right there. Oh, dude, we're stoked. Yeah, I know. We're we're going for it. It should be a really good time. This is all a learning process, too. Like, oh, yeah. we've never done a spotting sure. tournament before. This, the tournament we do every year is called the Yellowtail Shootout, which yeah, that's... is is similar in in structure of tournament, but completely different in the type of people we're getting to sign on and the event structure overall. Because yeah, um, you know the Yellowtail Shootout is really catered to the the private boater fleet because uh, you have to be out there with your buddy or whatever. Uh, and this is for shore fishermen, kayak fishermen, float tubers, boat fishermen, anything. We had a guy ask if he could bring his, uh, his stand-up paddleboard. And we're like, sure. For the, I don't care. For, for the yellow tail shootout? No, 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 no. For the, uh, oh. for the spotty tournament. Oh, okay. uh, he was like, yo, can I take my <laughs> stuff out there and do some spotty fishing? I was like, dude, yeah, register as kayak. You'd be fine. So, yeah, that's cool. I, I think you guys are going to have a good turnout, man, because there's, there's so many like spotty, like spotty bowl and all these different like spotty tournaments. And some of these guys like, that's just what they do now. They just straight up They're just dedicated. fish body tournaments because yep. like tackle stores are doing them all the time. So it's, I, I think you guys are going to have a big, you're going to have some hitters too. I think you guys have some, some ringers coming in there. These dudes know how to fish. I I already know a couple that have signed yeah. up and they're like ready to go. And I'm like, they're like, I'm going for, for like all or nothing. Like I'm going for yeah. number one here. So it's, it should be really fun. So what's the layout? Like, is it just, um, first, second, third, or are you going to have, um, side pots or anything like that or there's, there's a bunch of side pots so the the main prizes first second third five fish limit total length so we're not going by weight we're going by length um and we're doing five fish right. because you know we were just talking about it when spotties are biting they're really biting and catching five shouldn't be that big of an issue um so there's first second and third in terms of overall length there's going to be uh kid prizes first second and third overall length as well um, we're going to have a shore pounder award. So these are like the side pots now. Okay. So there's the guys just, you know, flipping the docks or whatever. Uh, we're going to have a largest bass award. So like a jackpot, basically. Um, we're going to have a halibut award because this is an excellent time for halibut or for yeah, fish. That's true. And, you know, and, and then we wanted to do that just in case, you know, you know your buddy who's been on the halibut grind and maybe he doesn't really want to switch up and fish bass. Right. They can fish halibut, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. win a prize over 200 bucks just by catching any legal fish. So um, we have the halibut. I think we have a smallest bass award. So if you get like a like a four inch a little bass yeah 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 sneaky or something, uh, you could win a you could win some sort of prize. And just then go down uh, to Tidelands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then um, and then a bunch of raffle stuff. So those, awesome. are the, those are the main pots. I think there's seven main prizes you can win if you're not a kid. If you're a kid, there's like ten. So, all nice. good. that's awesome, dude. That's that's super mm-hmm. exciting. I'm yeah, glad to see you guys getting into that. You know. Yes, me too. I mean, more, more been, into more into like the the bay thing. This. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, a something that everyone can 
you know, kind of relate to because someone's been bay fishing at some point in their life. If you're fishing, yeah. And and a lot of times yeah. they, if, if even if like the offshore is, you know, like BD's bread and butter, it's like a lot of these guys, it's like a gate fishing's like a gateway drug. You know, they kind of, they go and progress. Like a lot of these, especially these young guys are just new, new people to fishermen. They start spotty fishing and eventually they get short pound and they get a kayak, then they buy a boat and it's like, they, and they become offshore guys, you know, it's like, but they started, you know, fishing the spotty. So it's a good, yep. Good, good meeting them at that, man. that Absolutely. introduction level. Yeah. hundred percent. And then, you know, showing where they can go. Yeah. And then there's guys, I know guys like, it's all they do is fish bodies. They, they've they got like boats, it. they've got everything yeah. like, it, but they don't even go offshore. They don't even bother. Like, Hey, yeah. you want to go offshore? They're like, nah, I'm going to fish the yeah. base for spotty fishing is like what they do. It's become its own thing, which is really yeah. cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's the saltwater bass tournament, you know, I mean, there's like, the SWBA is a whole thing now of saltwater yeah. bass association. Like they yeah. fish tournaments where they will fish spotties or they'll fish calico, sand, sand bass. Yeah. Um, and there is a group of dedicated, dedicated fishermen that are killers. I mean, they are super good, but they have no interest in bluefin. They have no yeah. interest in yellow. They don't. Like, they, they, they no rock fish. Like, the, yeah. And, and I can relate to it. I mean, it, it's a challenge because it's one thing to catch. 51 pounders but it's another thing to catch five three pounds bodies i mean that is hard to do uh and yeah. if you take that to calico fishing you're talking about catching five seven to nine pound models yeah and that yeah. is the same like large mouth but you're dealing with current and weather and going out to the islands and all of this stuff it's brought up yeah. to the next extreme so yeah it, it's tide cool charts fishery. yeah tide charts everything so yeah good stuff good stuff yeah, man, that's that's so awesome. Well, that's cool. I mean, I'm I'm glad to be a part of that, and um, yes. really looking forward to glad it. You're so, a part of it too. and I'm, I'm interested to see who steps up and who's going to join. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. I'm really interested to see how many people we get. I'm hoping for a hundred or so people, but we'll see. I mean, with the amount I think of sponsors we got now, I think we can do it. We're we're going to be yeah. pushing really hard with the social media promotions and everything. So. Yeah, um, I, I, I think yeah. it can be done for sure. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? Um, switch gears a little bit. You got any um, fishing goals this year? Or I know we're still early in the year. Do you, is there anything like you're set on doing this year? Or is it just the whatever comes your way? A couple things, a couple things. So uh, I'm going to be commercial. So first off, the new boat is going to unlock a bunch of new goals for me. So catching oh, a big sea right. bass, yeah. catching a yellowtail on the new boat, catching a tuna on the new boat. Those are all checklists that I got to do now. Um, but also, you know, in terms of just trips, uh, my dad and I have a, a seven day trip, long range trip planned for the fall. Uh, that should be super fun. Uh, that we're hoping for Wahoo, but we're going to be going down south fishing the ridge. Um, but also, I've been starting to kind of put together a little itinerary of an Australia trip. Um, I've been looking into it. Nice. And honestly, it's it's not as expensive as I thought it was. And okay, dude, it's really not. I mean, it's like it, you can you can get over there for the same prices that you can like cross country if you go with the right people at the right time. Right. Um, pro tip: Fiji Airlines. Everybody, you can get it. You can get it round trip from LAX. Now this is east. This is west coast. Round trip LAX to, to Brisbane for six hundred dollars. Wow! So Man, that's it's nothing. just something from. I'm starting to kind of get into right. the, the planning phases because it's so cool. I mean, the fishing out there just looks unreal. It's honestly very similar to Florida, but they have all the different species, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and yeah, that is going to be really exciting. That's might be like a two week road trip from Brisbane to Cairns, Australia. And uh, if I could plan that out and finance it and get all that going, that would be like a trip of a lifetime. That would be so freaking cool. Um, other than yeah. that, you know, just the local fishing. Um, but yeah, Australia is starting to become a big focus of mine. I really want to see that happen. Yeah, I that looks super so awesome. Cool. That was um, somebody asked me. I was doing the live show last week, and it was one of the questions, one of the places that I'd want to fish or something, and it. I think my number one was probably Australia. Like that's, yep. it's yeah, just so Queens, wild, man. It's insane. So there's this place called Herby Bay and Herby Bay is like, it, there's a bunch of different fish that live there. But what I think is so cool is that it's a breeding ground of black marlin and you'll get in flat water, like flats, and you're fishing six, eight feet of water. You yeah. get an 
80 or 100 pound marlin. Not a big I've one. I've seen it. I've seen it. They're big enough, but they're small enough that you can target them with like spinning tackle. Stuff like yeah. That. And like you cast. I, I saw one video where they like hopped it. offshore and oh, they like on. brought it offshore or they brought it kind of to the beach but kept it in the water yes. and then like released yes. it. Yeah, it's just crazy, yeah. man. That, that would be a bucket list thing I find to catch yeah. a black marlin on like spinning gear and then land that thing and hold it and then release it would be unreal yeah so yeah that's what works. they do with the tarpon out here it's like yeah. similar they hook mm-hmm. these hundred hundred pound plus fish and then yep. they'll hop out of the boat or the because it's actually a lot you can't take them out of the water here if they're over like a certain length so they'll hop out kind of wade to the shore Damn. picture with the fish like halfway in the water and then just release sure. it from from the shore it's, so it's is that it's because cool. they're like is there su- are they super fragile why is that yeah it's my understanding it like um it damages their organs and stuff like oh. when they're too heavy and you pull them out like it it's just not good for them i mean imagine if you pulled one of those over into the boat and it's just <laughs> flopping okay. around because i don't think they're muscular like a tuna but even still i've never seen a tuna really released <laughs> They usually kill them, but at least those things are all muscle. I think these things are pretty soft, you know. That's cool. Yeah. 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 That's, I would say Alaska and probably, I mean, I I fished Alaska. That's why I didn't say Alaska, but then probably Australia would be on the list for sure. It's like the two places everybody should go that like is into fishing. I agree, man. I agree. I still need to make it up to Alaska or just the Pacific Northwest. I catch a salmon. I've never caught a salmon. That's a big goal of mine, too. So. I don't think I have either, actually, now that I think about it. I went up there and did some halibut fishing. We caught cod, halibut, and stuff like that. But nice. Yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't get on any salmon. But yeah, that's <laughs> next trip. It, that's, that's, but that's, that's the great thing about fishing. It's like it's never ending. There's always something to catch. Mm-hmm. No, matter, no matter where you fish, what you do, it's like nobody on this planet i think has caught every fish that there is to catch oh, you know what i mean there's no. you could target a new fish for species every year and you'd never get them all it's that's what makes it so great there's there's always something to, to target whenever you're getting bored it's like find find something in your area to target and just you can literally just go down the list and that would keep you busy for just so long and even if you you know hit all the different species now you got to get like a trophy size of each species yeah and you're never going to do that in a lifetime not even close yeah so it's that's, yeah that's 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 how it goes it's like cool. going back to the spotty like i know some guys that just don't even um they're just out there looking for the giant so they're fishing like huge baits and they don't, they don't even care if they go out there and skunk because they know they can fish or they know they can catch a dozen spotties if they wanted to but they're not even interested in that you know now it's like they've caught so many spotties all they really want to do is just catch those 19 20 inches you know and they'll spend the whole day and they that's what they're into. They don't care if they skunk because it's that's not what they were looking for was the dinks. It's like Absolutely. they're just on they're at a point in their life where they're just they're looking for that trophy spotty now, you know. They've gone to that that's level. Cool. You know? I yeah. mean, there's different levels of fishing and they're at the top level. They're they're looking for the biggest fish yeah. in the bay or the biggest fish in the lake or wherever they are. And yeah. you know, huge respect to those guys because they, they put their time in, you know. Yeah. A lot of those guys don't catch anything. And then they'll catch the giant one and they post it online. And everyone's like, Oh, you do that all the time. Right. Oh, like, no. Like, they didn't, yeah. Um, <laughs> they didn't see the 10 other times they went out and caught nothing, you know? Nothing. And then posted yeah. about it because I caught nothing. So, yeah. Yeah. Right That's on. crazy, man. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Um, good catching up with you again. You know, I look forward to Same working here. with you guys in BD some more in the future. Yeah, you guys so have always been great to work with. And it's been awesome. Where can the guys sure. find you or you have anything else you want to leave with or? Yeah. 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 So, uh, personally, my Instagram is Nat geo two eleven. Look me up, uh, follow BD outdoors. I'm running all of their social media stuff. So everything you see posted on social media or through BD outdoors is going through me. Um, or, you know, basically our team, but I'm managing that stuff. Um, yeah. Give it a like, give it a follow. Um, thanks again, Mike, for having me on. I, yeah, you know, no problem, dude. stoked catching up with you. Happy yeah. you're doing well out there in Florida. Can't wait to yeah. come visit you sometime. That should be a great, great time. Yeah, if so. you ever make it out here, you know, let me know. I'll oh, take yeah. you out fishing and oh yeah. We'll we'll get you bit, man, for sure. Killer. Awesome, man. Right on. Hey Nate, thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. And um no worries. I'm sure we'll see you. We'll see you in the summer when I'm out there. Absolutely. Right. right on. On, man. All right, have a later. Bye.